welcome to Hot Weekly. Hello, everyone. I'm Jonathan. I'm Crystal. And this is Haunt Weekly, a weekly podcast. We want to attract an entertainment community. Whether you're an actor, owner, or just plain aficionado, we aim to be a podcast for you. And we return to you once again whenever you are listening to us, whether it's Sunday when you're catching us live at 8 p.m. Central, 9 p.m. Eastern Time on our Facebook page. You might be catching us Monday after the recorded version goes out, or you might be catching it sometime in the future. If so, please tell me what happens. Yeah. I would really like some intel on how this 2020 thing turns out. <laughs> <laughs> like, what's the season closer? <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> but uh, in all seriousness, folks, thank you for joining us, and we're getting ready to do the, the news. news. And it's probably the busiest news episode we've had or at least very close yeah it's between it and the last one we did yeah because 2020 is crazy 2020 is crazy we're in the thick or at the end now of haunt season a lot of haunts are doing hell week or the ones that are open are doing hell right. weeks or in some cases hell two weeks yeah and yeah it, we're in the thick of it a lot has been going on in the haunted attraction world and we're going to talk about nearly all of it i think so, yes, take a moment, though, if you have not. Check us out at hauntweekly.com. You can find all of our previous episodes there. You can also find us on Facebook at Haunt Weekly, Twitter at Haunt Weekly, might sense a pattern forming here, and youtube.com slash Haunt Weekly is our YouTube page where you can find all of our previous videos. We've uploaded every stinking one, and they go live there pretty much at the same time they go out on iTunes, Google Play, and Stitcher, and all the other places you get your podcast from. Right. So, yes. And if you want to see the actual live recording of it and join us in the chat, possibly win some neat prizes, uh, doing some awesome things, so once again, facebook.com slash hauntweekly, Fridays, 8 p.m. Central, 9 p.m. Eastern. If you have a different time zone, you do the math. I suck at time zones. <laughs> and also, you can win prizes just by listening anywhere. That's true. You can listen anywhere. You, you don't th have to join us. <laughs> That's true. But it's it's much more fun to have the interactivity, I think. It is. I enjoy the interactivity I enjoy of the question. But yes, comments. we picked um, winners from outside of the chat before. Mm -hmm. So yes, and if you want to enter, we'll give you the instructions when we get there. But yeah, a lot of fun stuff going on. So that brings us to what's going on right now. First things first, we've got to announce the winner from last week's question of the week. Yeah. And we had a bit of a problem. Yeah. We f I knew this moment would come. Because we're not the largest podcast. Right. Didn't know it would come this soon. I bet, But it took like 20-ish weeks. Yeah, it was a while. But everyone who entered, and by the way, all great answers. I mean, apparently yeah. some of y'all got a real hard on for Reese's, and I had no idea. The question was, what's your favorite Halloween candy? Apparently a lot of y'all really love your Reese's. I had no idea Reese's was that big Reese's of a deal. Reese's and Tootsie's were the, the top answers. Yeah, and I thought Tootsie Rolls were going to get buried. Yeah. Um... I really did. I really thought Tootsie Rolls were just going to get buried and eviscerated, but they did not. Um, but everyone who entered has either already won uh -huh. or is friends slash family. Yes. And so that puts us in a bit of a bind. <laughs> right. Because so, we weren't going to do friends and family as winners. As winners. Because they get stuff from us all the time. This yeah. is special. Exactly. The whole point is to give stuff to relative strangers. <laughs> yes. Yeah, but, they listen to us because they're family and friends. <laughs> yeah, they they, they like have us. to be here. They have to participate. <laughs> exactly. But we are going to uh, do a family member this time around because I just love the answer and everyone else has already won fairly recently. So yeah, it's a good, and it was a very good answer, genuinely. Yeah. And it was Crystal's brother, uh -huh. um, Elliot Ramey in the chat, if you want to yeah. look him up, with the answer being Starbursts. Yes. And I, 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 I love that answer because I'm a huge mark for Strawberry Starbursts. Mm -hmm. Like, I will live and die for Strawberry Starbursts. There's just something about the Pink Starbursts that are amazing. Yeah. I don't know what it is. I love them. Pink Starbursts are legend. Oh, yeah. And our, our live chat is on Sundays, not on Fridays. Yes. Yeah, sorry. Did I say Fridays? 
Apparently. Oh, whoops. I apologize. <laughs> no, the live chat is 8 p.m. Sunday. Yes. We Maybe we'll do a Friday one sometime. It's the only day we don't have a video conference. Yeah, I know. Why not add one in? Well, we got six days of the week covered with video I mean, conference. This is like the 40th hour of video talks I've had since Tuesday. Well, I mean, Luckily, with this, we don't have to pay attention to the video there, just a scrolling chat. Right. Which does take a lot of the pressure off. Yeah. Because, like... Right now, behind us, we have literally the website blankwhitescreen.com up because it adds white light for us in the camera. To sh yeah. It helps the camera pick it up. It's basically our version of a ring, a poor man's ring light, no. which we actually have a ring light here, too, but we're not using it like a ring light. <laughs> no, because there are two of us. Yes, there are two of us, and we can't focus on just one subject. So it's sort of adding background illumination. It's, the lighting rig is very, very, very lame. That's what I'm trying to say. <coughs> but all this brings us to the new question of the week. Um, and we're going to probably start uh, people who... Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say people who've won probably will start becoming eligible soon. We don't have any more buttons, but Crystal's always making new and interesting stuff to give away. So it'll be great. Yeah, you will be getting new things from, from yeah. me. If you've won before, don't worry. You can win again, and it will be something different. Yes. So do not discourage the... the, uh, the um, Answering of the question of the week. Right. Besides, it's just plain fun, even if you don't win. Exactly. This week's question of the week, 2020 is a weird year. Normally, this would not be a good question. Yes. Normally, this would be a very crap question to ask a bunch of haunters. Like, what the heck are you asking us well, for? What do you think, dumbass? Yeah. <laughs> no, the question of the week is, what are you doing on Halloween night? What are you doing to celebrate Halloween night? Right. Some of you may be haunting. Yeah. But a lot of you are not going to be, and I'm curious to see how you are keeping Halloween alive. Yes. So, wow, Ellie says five times I said Friday instead of Sunday. <laughs> wow! Woo, it's been a couple of days, hasn't it? Yeah. But anyway, so yeah, let us know what you are doing for Halloween this season, and we will be sharing the winner once again Sunday... <laughs> At 8 p.m. on Facebook.com slash Haunt Weekly. My God, apparently we're going to have to do a Friday chat now. Because like I said, we have two craft chats. You have a chat with your co-workers, a chat with your brother. We, Ellie has a chat with her mom. Yeah, but I mean, all of mine from this week have mostly been, been work-related. Yeah. Like, Remote work. It, so it, many, so many video chats. Yeah, um, so what are you doing for Halloween? Let us know. We don't. We haven't. We we know what we're doing. Part of it, we've got part of it mapped out. And we're about to discuss that, um, but yeah, we don't know what the rest of it's going to be. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We are thinking actually of going live in our front yard. Yeah. Um. So that people can <coughs> see if people show up or not, or if not, yeah, you can it, just hang out with us. If you, you know? see a random, I won't announce it like in advance. Like usually no. with these, I forward post it sometime out. Yeah. I won't do that with this because I don't know when we're going to be going live. Right. Or if we're going to be able to. But if we can rig something up, I do want to go live and just see the trick-or-treating thing and the display and what goes on. And yeah. hopefully... hopefully we have no idea what we're expecting as far as trick-or-treaters. We have no idea. everybody knows that the haunted house is closed. Hopefully they do. I don't know that they're going to know to come by for trick-or-treating. You know, we'll see what happens. I am very yeah. curious, too. We might end up with a lot of it leftover Halloween candy. Yeah, there um, are some places to donate that. Yeah, exactly. So we, we got that covered if needed. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what have we done this week? What have we been working on? We uh, built a deer stand. We did. And it's scary. <laughs> yeah. I, I Look, I do not have what I would consider a fear of heights. I have been in high places many, many times before and not had issues. Right. I, I monkey around the rafters in here all the time. Yeah. I've been on the roof of the house multiple times. Right. Never had an issue with that height, but climbing this deer stand is somehow way more terrifying than those things. I would agree with that. I don't know why. I can't pinpoint. I think it's because the platform is basically the size of this chair. <laughs> kind of, yeah. And there's no room to stand, and there's nothing what I feel like firm to grip and keep your balance on. Yeah. It is terrifying. Now, luckily, we have a friend who's a regular actor in The Haunt. Yeah. Um, and he's going to be actually the one in the deer stand because I just wasn't comfortable enough there. I probably could get comfortable enough to do it. And if he's not able to do it, I'll probably make it work. Yeah. But or we'll just put you on the roof. 
Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the roof would work. Yeah. Just bring a chair up on the roof, that little uh, over outcrop. I could yeah, probably do exactly. that easily. That would be great. <laughs> I wouldn't mind that at all. The only challenge is getting up there, but once I'm up there, I've got all this well, room. Well, you've got a deer stand that's the same height. <laughs> you can climb up and climb over. <laughs> For the audio version, I am flipping Crystal off violently right now. Yeah. But no, so we're going to have him do that. He'll do the candy eating. We've still got to make the slide. Right. That'll be a project for the during I the I just week. want to make sure he's coming over tomorrow to make sure he's going to be comfortable. Yeah. Once we make sure of that, then I'll and, work on decorating the slide part. And he is an old school rock climber. He did a lot of rock climbing. He's, he did telephone pole work. Yeah. If anyone's going months. to be okay up there, it is him. Yeah. I'm just, I've never been inside a deer stand or a hunting stand before. It was a brand new experience, and I did not enjoy it. Yeah, I've not been on that kind. I've been on the little seedy kind. Yeah, I think the little seedy kind, oddly enough, might be easier. It's just a ladder up, and then you don't have to get in. You know what I mean? The seat's right. just there. Yeah. Here, it's like you have to climb up it, and then there's this weird ordeal of getting into the seat. Yeah. Where you have, like, all the, all the footage where you have nothing to grab and pull up. Yeah. And you're, you're literally, it's, it's it's very weird and indescribable. I mean, it's very sturdy. Yeah. Did not move under my weight at all. No. Um, It's well built. It's well set up. It's just, it's terrifying. Because like I said, the platform, this table that we are recording on, this card table we have, mm -hmm. is bigger than the damn actual, I think it's about the same size. It's probably the same size. As it, the actual um stand part of it. So, yeah, yeah it's terrifying. I mean, i got to be honest. It's straight fire terrifying to me. And I could probably get through it and for Halloween night. Yeah. Take a Xanax or something. Yeah. You know what else we were we did this week? What? We were on You're Not Listing podcast, yes. which you shared out yesterday. Yes, I did. Um, yeah, I shared it out. I shared it out j uh, Friday. I thought I shared oh, it Friday. out Friday. Yeah. I don't know. I saw it today. Yeah, I was <laughs> going to share it uh, Thursday. Right. But we had a bit of a crisis. <laughs> I love uh, my server. Um, yes. I had a situation. I had to start moving websites very frantically. Luckily, all transfers are done and, and we're in good shape there. But my God, was it a very thorny 24 to 36 hours there. Yes. Um, I'm still working on it. I've got to move a few more sites. But uh, the, the key things are done. The sites I control directly are done, thankfully, including Bernie Baxter. We had to move Bernie Baxter mid-season. Yeah, which is I never do that. Weird. I would never do that. I don't look for new hosting in October. No, why would you? No, you wait I until I can mess things up. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, we. Uh, but yes, we were on a podcast. Yeah, it's called "You're Not Listening," a music podcast. We were invited on there by the O'Loughlins, Sean yes. O'Loughlin and Dan O'Loughlin. Right. Um, and basically, we got to talk for about half an hour to forty minutes about one song, and we chose. Well, it was chosen by combination. Everyone involved was Harley Poe's "The Her Song." Yes. Which we mentioned. In the episode we did on Halloween music, we talked about our favorite Halloween music. Right. And that came up in the discussion and that question a week from back then. That led to Sean inviting us on the podcast and us literally spending 40 minutes talking about one song. Yeah. And then we got to talk about other Halloween music, too. Yeah, and I've been thinking of Halloween music that I forgot to mention. Oh, yeah. But I was also having an audio issue with my headphones. So. Yeah, we, we couldn't find our splitter was the problem yeah. on that. And we, so what I'm going to do, I think I'm going to drop like 8,000 headphone splitters in the Walmart cart. <laughs> I think that that's a great idea. And just going to sprinkle them around the house and the studio like like little fairies. They're just going to be <laughs> live every... Yeah. You're, you're going to get up in the middle of the night and step on something. It's going to be a headphone splitter. So, yeah, we're going to be doing that. It'll be a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. Oh, what we oh yeah, and, and other news. <laughs> I forgot. We had something else. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The hurricane. Yeah. The goddamn piece of hurricane. Uh-huh. Yeah, Hurricane Zeta has formed right near the Yucatan. Oh, no, sorry. It's Tropical Storm Zeta right now. Right. It's expected to become a hurricane and then to make landfall. Right now, they're saying at us... Is a yeah. strong tropical storm. As every hurricane this season has was initially predicted initially to be. Initially predicted to be at us. <coughs> this we'll is see. the seventh time this hurricane season. Time number seven. We have been in the cone of uncertainty for a hurricane or tropical storm. And we're up to Zeta. And we have been hit zero times for the record this season. I mean, that's the lucky part. But, my God, I, I, I can't take it. I mean, it's like it was weird because I'm sitting there in my office 
like earlier today, I was take, kind of taking a day, easy day of it. Yeah. I'm like, there was something I was supposed to be checking every so often. Well, oh, yeah, yeah, the hurricane. Right. <laughs> yep. That's it, happened so many times now. I am forgetting about the hurricane. Mm-hmm. And this really isn't going to change our plans. I mean, the, the wind estimates I've seen don't look like it would imperil our display. Right. We'll keep an eye on it. Obviously, this is this is way late in season. Yeah, it shouldn't be happening. No, it shouldn't be happening at all. It has happened before. Late season, I mean, according to Bob Brack, our uh, local hurricane expert, mm -hmm. um, it has happened before. There have been late storms, but they've always been fairly minor because the Gulf is very cool right now and doesn't sustain hurricanes. But, oh my God, I did not need... Uh, uh, this right now, especially with it possibly hitting the 28th or the 29th. Yeah. Just, just yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's nothing else to say there. No. <clears throat> All right. Speaking of things we want to mention to make sure everyone knows, uh, Raven's Grin Inn GoFundMe is still going on. Raven's Grin Inn uh, last week put up a GoFundMe. They're asking for help. They are a year-round haunted house at Mount Carroll, Illinois. If you have not heard of them or not been there, it is it is easily the most unique haunted attraction experience I've ever had. Yeah, one of the top <clears throat> or most unique experiences, period. Yeah. Like, even outside of haunting. Yeah. It, it is an experience like no other. I cannot even begin to do it justice with the description. We did episode 87. We sat down with Jim Warfield of Raven's Grin Inn. And if you know anything about Jim Warfield, the fact he sat down in a single chair for an <laughs> hour to talk about things is mind-boggling. But he did it. Yeah. And it was awesome. It's one of my favorite episodes. Um, check it out. Episode 87. Way back, July 2017. Yeah. Um, they are asking for just $7,000. That is yeah. not a lot of money. They've just passed 4000 If you can give, please do. If you can't give, please help share. I've helped, helped make the, me, things easier for me here when we're doing the audio. TinyURL.com slash Go Ravens Grin. That's TinyURL.com slash G-O-R-A-V-E-N-S-G-R-I-N. Yes, and to put this in perspective, they've been closed since March yeah. because of COVID. So that's less than $1,000 per month that they've had to close that they're asking for yeah. help with. Yeah, they they, so. they really um, are not asking for much, and they're such a unique haunt. Yeah. This is their source of income. This is Right. Also, if you feel uncomfortable giving to yes. um, a GoFundMe, they do have an Etsy shop. Just go to their, their website. website. Yeah. And um, head up their Etsy shop. And They've got some really cool T-shirts that yeah. I believe Jim designed himself. Yes. I am personally very partial to the glow-in-the-dark Raven's Grin Inn logo. Yes. It is very freaky at night. Yeah. <laughs> it, be careful. Don't leave your closet door open. The, the, the glow-in-the-dark on that is actually very bright. Yeah. Surprisingly bright for glow-in-the-dark paint. But they have lots of neat things there. So check out the other Etsy store. That's a great way to help out, too. Right. <clears throat> All right, so as uh, we mentioned in the intro, which has now been going on for 18 minutes. <laughs> I know. Long intro this week. we got a lot to get through, though. Um, we're doing the news this week, and as we wrap up Haunt Season 2020, there are one thing that has been very consistent is there were a lot of very generic articles about how haunts are functioning during COVID. Yeah. This and and I'm not including any of them here because these were pretty much all of them were fluff pieces. Yeah. And if you want to know how they're doing, you know, yeah. you can find out what's going on at your local one. Yeah. But um, my opinion's not well. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and it, it's not been, I know some haunts out there are saying that we're breaking records this year. And that actually worries me more than haunts that are saying they're struggling. Because how are you breaking records at the same time you're supposed to be reducing capacity? Right. Yeah. That doesn't make a lot of sense. It does. That, that doesn't I mean, add up. Unless you had a tiny audience to begin with, that's not something to brag about in 2020. Yeah, I mean, we're supposed to be avoiding crowds. We're supposed to be avoiding these situations. And the fact of the matter is, a lot of haunts have not been doing a very good job of that. Now, here's the thing. Some haunts have been trying really hard, and, and yeah. their, their audience has been cooperative, and it's largely right. seems to have worked out. Some haunts really have tried, mm -hmm. and their audience has not cooperated. Right. And it has not worked out very well. Yeah. And then there are haunts that just don't give a damn. Yeah. 
and haven't tried and haven't cared about it, and they're the ones that are going to create problems for everyone else, oh, <coughs> especially man. down in the future. Yeah. So anyways, what we have to talk about first, um, you want me to take odds? Which It doesn't matter. All right. You read them all? Yeah. All right. So I'll start off then. So we're starting off this week with three separate shootings. Three more. It's like the movie Clue. Three yeah. more murders. No. <laughs> there were well, shootings in this case. Yeah, there were shootings in this case. Um, but yeah. And if you'll remember from last month's episode, we also reported on shootings then. Three then as well. Exactly. And the crazy thing, as we mentioned last time, uh, last news episode, was I went through and looked at all of our previous news episodes. We had never reported on a shooting at a haunted house. Nope. Um, ever. We There was a shooting at a Halloween block party we had talked about. There was a shooting that was haunt actor related. It was a tiff, but it had happened off haunt property. Right. It was just a workplace disagreement type thing from what, I could, what we could tell. Yeah. This year we've had six haunted attraction related shootings and it's it's bananas. So the first one is um, woman injured in drive by shooting at Houston Haunted House. This article is by Anna Bauman at MSN. Basically at the Haunted Trails in Houston, Texas, which is not one of the ones we went to. Correct. Um, a driver drove past the attraction and started firing. One woman was visiting the attraction was struck. Yes. Um, a tourniquet was applied to her leg. I'm sure that will make Chris Gay very happy. Someone was on site that knew how to properly do a tourniquet. Well, we're assuming it was properly. <laughs> no, well, that's true. But she was transported to hospital in fair condition. There were no other injuries. There's no word on motivation. And the vehicle is believed to be a pickup truck, which this is Texas. That does not narrow it down at all. No. No. It had four wheels. Yeah. Might as well have said that. Yeah. I, yeah. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, that doesn't help. Yeah, it's so yeah, this this frightens me because it sounds like someone maybe had a grudge with a haunt mm -hmm. or maybe was just engaging in jackassery and wasn't even aware the haunt was on the uh, where they were shooting into. It, it's it's yeah, it's, it's, it's unclear. Yeah, it, it's completely unclear and I don't know if you know because I'm hoping that that's the case. Yeah. That it was jackassery and they didn't know what was going on. I am and then there were people in them there woods. <laughs> exactly. I'm hoping that that's the case and not that they drove by someplace, saw a line, and decided to shoot into a crowd. Because that's the other scenario. Yeah. They, they knew there was likely people there and decided yeah. to fire anyway. Yeah. I hope that's not what happened. Yes. I am hope I'm hoping for um, ignorance and yeah. idiocy. Which, I mean... Yeah, idiocy is always possible, especially in 2020. Yeah. Don't don't underestimate the power of stupidity. Exactly. All right. So, our next shooting. Uh, <laughs> next shooting. Yep. Bob, our next shooting, up for bid, is... Well, you've already said that there's three. This is the next one. Yeah, I know. I love... All right. So, a juvenile was shot and injured at a North Carolina haunted house. Um, another juvenile is now in custody. This comes from Teresa Sager at WSCO TV. It took place at the parking lot of Woods of Terror. The gunshot shots were fired in the air and one struck a customer. Because gravity is a thing and gunshots do come down. They, yeah, <coughs> exactly. The victim was tended to immediately. The staff cleaned the wound and stopped the bleeding. So that's good on them. Um, hospital, you know, they mm -hmm. were taken to the hospital. And the shooter drove away, but were able to... Um, yeah, they, they managed to arrest the shooter yeah. some like three miles away. Exactly. <clears throat> okay. There were about 100 people on site at the time. Yeah, have roughly 50-50 staff and customers. Yeah, which is not a bad... No, ratio. that's not a bad that size. That doesn't sound like a haunt that's doing bad no. things and COVID. It's not like they had thousands of people there. Like with one haunt we talked about last time, right. they had like a thousand people... In the parking lot. Yeah, I actually had to look at the number again that you had put in the show notes to yeah. make sure that it was only 100, because yeah. I was expecting to see a 1,000. Yeah, and it was in the article. They had about, they, they yeah. said they had 50 staffers and 60 P customers. So or, that was estimates. So I just said yeah. 100, keep it nice and round for us. Yeah, exactly. They had about 100 people on the property, and it's a big property. Woods of Terror actually is a, a big place. Yeah. But still, this is just, it's nuts. So firing randomly in there, apparently there was some kind of disagreement Right. And the shooter just fired into the air. Yeah. And one of the bullets came down because 
Duh. Yeah. They, they don't go into outer space when you shoot in the air. No, they have to go somewhere. <clears throat> it's not going to go put a hole in the, in the space station or anything. Yeah. I mean, it, no, it, it it comes back down. And if you shoot straight up, it will come straight back down. Yeah, and there's also no motivation known for this one, but they did drive into the lot yeah. and then shot. It's it's nuts. Um, So, yeah. And our third shooting happened yesterday, as of our recording time. It happened Saturday. Um, a security guard shot in stomach after someone fires gun into a crowded hex house article by Megan Butler, KTUL. Um, in Sapopa... Sapopa... Sapopa? We'll say Sapopa, Oklahoma. A security guard was shot at Hex House after someone fired into the crowd. Basically, two people, a man and a woman, male and a female, is what they say, male and female suspect, were causing trouble in both in line and inside the haunt. Security guard did his job and ejected them, asked them to leave the property, then drove around and fired into the crowd. They Apparently, they fired one shot and struck the security guard. Right. Um... The condition is unknown. He was shot in the stomach. The condition is unknown, but he is believed he will be okay. And because the um, victim is Indigenous American, the case has been turned over to the FBI. Yeah. Which I, I was not aware that was a thing, but apparently it is. Yeah, I didn't know either. In fact, we discussed this a little bit after I read the notes yeah. to find out why that was mentioned and why it um, called for the it, FBI. It's a, we have a, it's a weird, complicated history. Uh -huh. There that I we definitely do not have either the wisdom nor the time to get into. But yeah, since the victim was native, uh, the case is automatically picked up by the FBI and they'll be investigating it. So I, I hope they, they catch the, these two as well. Because th there's nothing worse than people that do enough jackassery to get ejected from a haunt. And then not only get ejected from the haunt, but to you know. To come around and then fire at the security guard that did the ejecting? Yeah. It's just crazy, Pants. It's absolutely nuts. It is. Um, it, 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 it's absolutely insane, and it's not worth this. Nothing in here is worth it. No. And <clears throat> what we'll do is we'll go and talk about the next story, because it's not an actual shooting, but it's gun-related. <laughs> Yeah. And then we'll sort of catch back up on everything. We'll look back around. How's that? So go no. ahead. Okay. So, <laughs> and <laughs> a Boise man allegedly threatened teens with a gun at Idaho Haunted House over a Trump t-shirt. Yeah. Basically, kids um, on the bus called him out for his Trump 2020 t-shirt yeah. And said that, you know, how could you vote for someone yeah. and, and listed a bunch of reasons. They were they were they were heckling and teasing him. Yeah. And um so the person who was arrested is jo Joshua Lochner. He's thirty seven. And this story, by the way, comes from Jacob Scholl, the Idaho at the Idaho Statesman. Um so he's charged with six felony accounts of aggravated assault and one misdemeanor count of carrying a concealed weapon after pulling a gun on teens. Yeah. Basically, they were teasing him, mocking him, and arguing with him. And the man who was described as very intoxicated. Yeah. And the video for this one tells everything. Yeah, it does. Because we saw the video way before any news story yeah. came out. The video made it on Reddit, actually. And it was yeah. one of the posts we're talking about in a minute. Yeah. And it, it's just, you know... A, I had to say, okay, was this video shot in 2020? Yeah. Because nobody was wearing masks on this bus to the haunt. Um, and B, it, you're a grown-ass man. These are kids. You know? I, I don't get it. You know, you can argue that the teens were being out of, were out of line, they shouldn't have been teasing him so much, and whatever. But they weren't being violent. No. They weren't doing anything that warranted having a gun pulled on them. No. I mean, and he did this knowing full and goddamn well people were recording this on cell phones. Yeah. Because there's actually several care. videos of it. Yeah. He didn't care. <clears throat> he didn't care. He was drunk. He was ornery. And when people started challenging him over his attire, yeah. he pulled a gun on them. And it's absolutely bonkers. 
Um, he was escorted off the bus by the security, good security there. No one was injured. He was arrested. He was kicked off the property, arrested, and now you know the charges he's facing. No. <clears throat> so, that's four stories there, all dealing with guns at haunts. Yeah. And three of them are shootings. One is a goddamn near shooting, we'll say. Yeah. Uh, it's a wonder that it wasn't a shooting. I agree. I guess good for restraint. <laughs> well, I mean, I love that he, in the video he says, you need to calm down, and everyone's like, you're the one with the gun! Exactly. You dumb... That guns are not de-escalation. No. I mean... I, I... There's never been a situation that was de-escalated by pulling gun. That is an escalation. Yeah. As a deliberate and calculated escalation of a situation. Yeah. Which can be useful if someone's not prepared for that escalation and you're in genuine bodily harm. Yeah. But if someone's just teasing you and taunting you and verbally engaging with you, pulling and... a gun does not is not de-escalation. Yeah. It's turning a and... it's turning what is basically an argument into a potential of someone getting killed. Right. It's not okay. No, that's not okay. There's no way that's okay. It's not okay to bring a gun to the haunt in the first place. We've no. talked about this. And it's not but... okay to bring the gun to a haunt while drunk. No. That adds another layer of ass hattery to this. But here's the thing. I, I'm talking with haunt owners some. Yeah. And one of the things that these shootings have shook a lot of haunt owners. Yeah. Haunt owners that never really put much consideration into queue line security and things. Are starting to take action. Well, and one of the the um, shootings actually happened at a haunt that had shown their security system with the metal detectors and everything um, a couple of years ago. They had a video about it. Yeah. You know, and there was a very good video about what you can't bring. Mm -hmm. You know, for their customers, and they still had a shooting in the parking lot. Yeah. And that that's one of the problems is like haunts. Of the six shootings we have covered, right? I don't think any would have been prevented by metal detectors um, in the haunt or any kind of security there. One of them may have, depending on where the placement of security of, the, of, of it was, but yeah. most of these incidents have either taken place in parking lots just off the property, like the one at Erebus. Right. Or, or, or the, the one shooting into it. From or, the road. Exactly. Or people shooting into it from their cars. Yeah. And you can't put the metal detectors inside their cars. No. And and I, it, it's it, weird to watch haunts adopt a strategy which doesn't even deal with the actual threat haunts are facing this year. No, it, do, it doesn't. I, 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 that blows my mind because, yeah, I get it. You want to do some security theater. You want to do something to make people feel safe and for you to feel like you're doing something. Right. But... That doesn't help. And and that's one of the problems is it might even create a false sense of security that could make things worse. Yeah. Um, you know, what does help? Actual strong police presence would help. Detailed yeah. cops and things like that can help. But they have to be where the crowds are. Yeah. And if you keep them at or in your haunt and the issue is in your parking lot, and they're not there, mm -hmm. then they can't do anything. They're not a deterrent. Right, exactly. And I would also say that make sure your parking lots and places, especially if you don't have security, are well lit. Yeah. Because a lot of, of haunts don't bother lighting the parking lot. Yeah, there's a lot of haunts. A lot of haunts we've gone to, parking is not even a secondary or tertiary concern. No. We did an episode about parking. Yes, we did. I don't remember what it was. We did a whole episode about parking at haunts. and I don't think we mentioned lighting it well, but... I thought we did, but if we, if, we well, didn't, if we didn't add it retroactively, add it in yeah. for me, please. Exactly. Consider it added. But no, it's, it's crazy because... The approaches haunts are taking to prevent shootings would not stop the actual shootings we're seeing. Right, exactly. Yeah, and, and that's frustrating because all that does is that it gives you the security theater and it makes people feel like they're safe when they're not. Yeah. I mean, when they're not, or they're not any more safe than they were. Yeah. And this was highlighted by a couple of Reddit posts we saw. One of them was dealing with 
uh, one of them posted the video of that last story, but right. the post itself asked the question, hey, we're having problems with violent and angry customers. Yeah. By the way, before we get into this too far, Sorry. parking was 53. Wow. We way, need, we need to revisit back. that. That may be due up. Uh, parking 2 may be coming up. All right. Because I think that needs to be revisited, especially since that, that might be good for like November because... That's when you probably should start thinking about how messed up your parking is because <laughs> you have time to do something about it before yeah. haunt season. Yeah, but back to the Reddit post. Yeah. One was asking, hey, anyone else having problem with violent customers? And you know, it used to be we never had issues, never had to throw anyone out. Everyone's having a good time. This year, at least once a night, we're having to throw out violent groups. Yeah. And it's insane. Yeah. And another post asked a similar question saying, hey, do we have any security tips? Um, basically, we've had one of our cast members who was underage get sexually assaulted and another was harassed. No. Yeah. And it's like, I followed our haunted attractions for a long, long time. I think even longer than I've been doing this podcast. Yeah. And I've never seen post people asking about secure. I don't recall them at least. No, me either. They certainly haven't been multiple in one season. No, no. Well, we haven't had multiple shootings in one season either. Or, like, ever. So. And I'm really, really nervous because we're recording this on the uh, the twenty the 25th. We're heading into, like I said, Hell Week. And Halloween is on a Saturday. So the Friday and Saturday coming up are going to be the busiest nights. Yep. I'm, I'm antsy. Because, like I said, we had one just on Saturday. I, I, I was hoping because we had this rash of them. Right at the beginning of the season, the first weekends, a lot of these haunts opened. Right. A lot of stuff went down. Yeah. Five of them happened in the, those first days. <coughs> first days of season. Okay. But this last one happened Saturday. Right. Oh, yeah, because we had, you know, a week off or... Yeah. Um, yeah, where we were like, oh, we didn't have any more shootings this weekend. Yeah, we did. Maybe then we, we did. don't have to report on any of this news next, next week. Then, then, then we found some. Or some found us. Yeah. Worded however you'll want. And and basically, I, I, I'm antsy. I'm worried. Yeah. I can't help it. I'm worried that this is going to be a very violent hell week and that Halloween night in particular is going to be, it's going to be rough. Yeah. I hope it's not. I hope I'm wrong. Mm-hmm. I hope this fear turns out to be completely unfounded. I will smile and raise my glass if that turns out to be the case. Yeah. But I'm very worried. No. And I, I, I can't get over that. Mm -mm. So, please, those of you who are haunting this year, be safe. Be aware that tensions are high. T danders are up. <laughs> yeah. Tempers are flared. People don't remember how to be around other people. Yeah. And for a lot of people, this is going to be the first activity they've done, normal activity they've done in quite some time. Yeah. <clears throat> so just be aware of that and be safe is all I can say. Yeah. <clears throat> Choking on something. Jeez Louise. <clears throat> so, um, I, oh, the next one's mine, I believe. Yeah. <laughs> if you want me to take it because you're choking on something, I yeah, can. Yeah, go ahead and start. All right. So, <clears throat> the commissioners have granted a permit to allow Reaper's Realm to continue operations for the remainder of the Halloween season. Now, if you'll remember from last episode... Last news episode. Last news episode... Reaper's Realm was in it as being the site of one of the shootings. Ben Sanzel at the Salisbury Post reported on this that basically after the shooting happened, the city went and looked and said, hey, you don't have any permits to be <laughs> open. This, this, the Reaper's Realm story just gets more bananas. Because yeah. it, was, it was the most bananas of the shootings. It was. Because they had a thousand people in the parking lot, including several hundred unattended minors that were just which we heard about happening in New Orleans yeah, Nightmare, exactly. just yeeted out by their parents yeah. and left to stew at a parking lot in a haunted house. Yeah. Um, so, hey, do you want to go to Reaper's Realm? Get out! <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then a shooting happens, and now the sheriff's office not only has to deal with the shooting, but trying to get these minors to their parents. Yeah. Because they have no cars, no means of transportation. Right. They were just left there. But anyway, um, yeah, go ahead, sorry. I wonder if that could be considered abandonment. Um, but It, it anyway. sure starts to feel like it at Doesn't some point. It? So, anyway, they 
didn't have a concessions permit, a fire permit. None of the permits. Or, yeah, anything. All their temporary permits had expired. They were literally bankrupt on permits. Because they were temporary <laughs> permits. It's in the name. But, so, instead of closing them down, mm -hmm. the city worked with them, and they were able to get the permits they needed to stay open. Yeah. That's... And that might be the craziest part. Yeah. The, the county. I think it was actually the county, but yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, it was yeah. a county. Yeah, it was the county. Yeah. I mean, and there and these weren't the only issues. No. Uh, they had compl noise complaints saying that the haunt was active and noisy well past midnight. Right. Even though they say they, they usually, ha usually have it emptied before midnight. Right. Um... But yeah, they claim to have fixed the issues. They've instituted a policy against drop-offs and require that people drive to the property. They're banning walk-ups. Yeah. I mean, those are good policies. But if people don't follow the policies, what's the enforcement strategy? Right. That's my question. I'm a yeah. big believer. If you have policies without enforcements, you don't have policies. Exactly. Anyways, moving on. I'll take the next one now since I am... Have you recovered? <clears throat> I, I, mostly. Sufficiently. The, the air of stupidity in the room from that story was just too oh, much. Yeah. That, that is literally the most bad shit insane thing I think we've covered in the Hall Weekly News episodes. The, the shooting, the, the the permits, everything, this whole saga yeah. is just bad shit. It is. I mean, wow. <laughs> and then they get the reopen. It's just like... Mm -hmm. Anyway, I'm, I'm going to move on because otherwise yeah. I'm going to stay on this and we we've taken a lot of time. Okay, an article by WSAZ says that haunted attraction closes for the rest of the season. Um, in Pike County, Ohio, horror at Dogwood Pass has ended their season early. Actually, this one's pretty batshit, too. It is. <laughs> Let's be honest. This is a contender <laughs> in the batshit department. Long story short, too late. Um, they announced a an temporary closure on October 11th, and they didn't say why, other than they were going to improve their safety protocols. So yeah. a lot of people, myself included, when I first heard this, said, oh, COVID stuff. They've got to up their COVID game a little bit. Right. Fair play to you. Close down. Take care of what you got to. No. It had nothing to do with <laughs> COVID at yeah. all. Basically, they had a stage collapse, and two people were injured by it. According to the sheriff's office, one person had, had broken legs plural so they unless they have three legs they broke all their legs yeah <clears throat> and another was a head injury that resulted in seizures so a, a serious concussion um they were to open they were going to reopen um however they announced a seasonal closure of october 16th they did not state the reason um for the closure anywhere in fact which is weird in in fact the only reason we know about it is because other people in the comments were sharing the sheriff's office post. Yeah. So they were completely untransparent about this. Yeah. Uh, it's just so yeah, that's that's uh, but wow. Anyway, moving on. No. Okay. Oh, they are going to host a block party though. Oh yeah. Outside the manor on No, this is the next door. Oh no. Wait. I think it's that one. No, that's the, that's the next one. You jumped oh, ahead. I jumped ahead. Because all these stories look <clears throat> alike this week. Yeah, they do. All right. So, the Haunted House attraction, um, another one that's shutting down early. And another article by WSAZ. Exactly. I can see how I got confused. I, I totally understand it. I'm just letting you know that was not, that was a different, that was a different closure reported by WSAZ. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> all um, right. So, 12 Fold Manor in Wayne, West Virginia has shuttered early due to the fire marshal. Because someone complained. And Apparently with justification. Yeah, yeah. Um, so there was issues with width of corridors and electronics. It's brought a lot of businesses yeah, to a lot of the restaurants and gas stations. It, so the they're sad to see the con closed. Yeah. But it's an open outdoor trail um, after the closure. Yeah, they opened they opened up a new attraction right. after it. Which, I mean, okay, that's better at least. Yeah. It eliminates a lot of the fire code issues, but... Fire code compliance, I mean, yeah, it's difficult. How did they not get the fire code compliance permits before they opened? Yeah. I, I'm going to take a stab and say that Wayne, West Virginia, is not a bustling metropolis and that maybe their local fire marshal is yeah, not super on the point with this. Maybe, but I mean, because this is the one, isn't it, where 
the uh, customer waited for hours and hours and still didn't get in? I think it was, yeah. They had long lines. Yeah, yeah. they had really long lines, and so they had waited for like four hours or something and finally left at 11 o'clock at night. So, yeah, it, it's just insane. Yeah, and like I said, the local community loves this haunt. This local community seems to be really behind this haunted attraction. Right. Because they're bringing in good business, and they are the ones... Um, who are going to have a block party outside the manor. They can't do anything exactly. inside it. Yeah. How is a block party, though, COVID-friendly? Well, once again, I'm going to take a stab and say Wayne, West Virginia, <laughs> is not at the forefront of COVID caringness. Well, we have no idea. We have no idea, admittedly. If we are wrong on that, Wayne, West Virginia, let us know. <laughs> yeah, let us, Wayne, let us know. All right, Bayville Screen Park, cited for overcrowding, this article by Jillian Smith at Patch. In Farmingdale, New York, Bayville Screen Park was cited by the Nassau Fire Marshal's Office for failure to enforce social distancing. The park reopened on schedule, but said it has stepped up its social distancing enforcement. The park had between 200 and 300 people in it, and said, and said now it will ask those who are not social distancing to please leave. And I actually looked at their site. That's an expensive a thing to go to. It's like 50 to $60 a ticket there, so no. telling people to leave is a big ask, admittedly. But if they're not going to follow the rules, follow yeah. the rules then they've got to go. Yeah, I agree. No, they I don't agree. have a, they don't have no, a I choice. Com no. I completely agree with that. Yeah. It's, but yeah, I mean, and I gotta say, this is something I like to see, that the, the fire marshal's office stepped in, issued a fine, issued a penalty, right. but worked with them in upping their game and Making it so that they could reopen more safely. Yeah, I like that. That's a that to me is a happy story ultimately. Right. Unlike the next one. <laughs> yes, Welcome to Hellfest has been canceled. Uh, this is based off of a Facebook post on October twenty second. Welcome to Hellfest in Los Angeles announced their cancellation for the season. Seems to be marred by poor communication. No shit, as <laughs> we'll get to in a minute. Um, no follow-up on whether or not people will get refund for the tickets that they've already bought. Um, at least some people drove great distances to attend this. Yeah, one commenter said they drove, uh, spent $100 on gas, which at California prices is probably just five miles, but, <laughs> but it also took two hours. So. Right, <laughs> exactly. And so the thing about this is it's an L.A. haunt. Mm -hmm. L.A. haunts canceled... Halloween, basically, and haunts yeah, all the were Halloween not activities permitted to open yeah. way back in September. But Hellfest continued to march forward with a planned October 22nd opening and didn't cancel until, like, the absolute last second. Yeah. And then... Like, a couple hours before they were supposed to open. Yeah, and then they posted about it on Facebook. They didn't update their website. They were still selling tickets. Yeah. After they canceled. They were still selling tickets, and I, I don't know why they thought they could open. No. I mean, they had 46 days. Yeah. 46 days where they could have said, oh, you know, city, county, whatever's not changing their mind. Maybe we should just take down that ticketing thing. Yeah, and refund the money and just yeah. just give in. But no, they waited until literally the last possible second. Yeah, and I, I think that if you, if you have something like this come out that's for your entire area. Mm-hmm. You at least take the ticketing offline as soon as that announcement's made. Yeah, you try to figure it out. Yeah, say we're trying, but we're waiting to see what what the laws are. Yeah, here, exactly. If we're going to be able to. Well, moving up north to Canada, in Chilliwack, um, British Columbia, just like saying Chilliwack, um, protesters take the Chilliwack City Hall in defense and support of Reapers Haunted Attraction. It was. Forced, they were not granted their temporary use permit, which they normally get, because the greenhouse structure the indoor part takes place in was not up to code. Protesters, well, the photo, the article only shows three, but protesters nonetheless took to City Hall to plead the case. However, it does not appear to have worked. The interior haunt remained closed, but a, a maze of the maze of terror did open, and they promised to return in 2021. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. All right. And this next one comes to us from Illinois. Um, the state of Illinois, the whole state. The whole state. WBBM said haunted houses. Uh, really? There's a station called WBBM. 
Yes. <laughs> were not permitted to open. Yeah. However, several of them have decided that they are still going to open. Yeah, and, and have are, been, been doing open. so. Yes. Some with and, the support of the local towns and cities. Yeah, and some selling out nightly. Yeah. Some that we've been to. And liked and enjoyed and respected. Yeah. Um, so, we've heard that the, the haunts are in legal challenges that are ongoing to, to try to stay open. But, I mean, I don't know. Well, what's the end game here is my yeah. question. Because, okay... You oh you manage to fight and either drag it out through court or otherwise stay open the whole season. Now you're on the government shit list. Yeah, exactly. And now not just you, the entire industry yeah. is on the government. They're going to be known as petulant children who refuse to comply with the reg regulations, and that's going to lead to more regulations. Yeah. The way you get more regulation is not complying with existing regulations. You can say that regulation was dumb. You can say it was stupid. That's fine. Yeah. You can disagree with it till you're blue in the face. That's your right. But my God, opening and, and defying it and, and challenging in court. That's and saying, just, and, hey, look at all of us over here. We're not going to follow the rules. That just brings the hammer down. Yeah. And that's what's going to happen, I think. I would be very surprised if this doesn't have consequences for Illinois haunted houses for years to come. What yeah. could have been a, a one-year temporary closure is now going to be an ongoing battle with the state and possibly local governments, too, just for survival. Right. And I I don't understand the logic behind this. I really don't. Oh, they wanted to open. And so well, yeah, they, but that's... They decided... They're just thinking short-term. They're not playing chess. No. They're not even playing checkers. <laughs> okay. Anyways, it's it's a frustrating situation. Mm -hmm. Okay, but speaking of haunts that are open or somewhat open, this one's bizarre. <laughs> um, rapper the Baby opens Nightmare in Carolina Haunted House. This is an article by Alexis Zariki at uh, Kiss ninety five point one FM. Uh, the rapper the Baby opened Nightmare in Carolina in Charlotte North and Charlotte, um, and I legit can't find any details about it. Yeah, so that's it. I found multiple articles about the opening and that it was happening and that it was they were hiring from the local community and this and that. But you go to the website, it listed as coming soon. Mm -hmm. It features a neat little effect with spiders where if you run your mouse over the spiders, they do things. Uh -huh. I, I might have played with that a little bit longer than I should have when <laughs> compiling the show notes. That's fun. But it was supposed to feature a haunted, a haunted trail, an outdoor movie theater, a food truck, and a DJ. No. But I can't find any information about it other than a bunch of articles that seem to be quoting from the same press release. Yeah. So. <coughs> Good luck. Yeah. What's the if, thing? If you're there and you do go to it, just let us know How what it was it and what it was. <laughs> How was it and what, what was, was it? it? Actually, just fill all five W's and the H for us. It'd probably be better. Yeah. <laughs> Who, what, when, where, why, how. Just go for it. Mm -hmm. Just send us an email with that. <laughs> all right. Uh, next up, we have San Diego's haunted Whaley House has gone viral for Good Halloween. Virtual. Virtual. Maybe both. <laughs> Maybe both. Who knows? We hope. Hope viral. Viral yeah. be good. Wow, Virtual. that's that's a weird thing to say in 2020. <laughs> it is. <laughs> we God. need to, like, rename that. Yeah, we need another name for that term. Holy God. That, that's, that, that, that's, that'll be our question next week. <laughs> yeah, we can't call it going viral anymore. What do we call it? Someone help us out. Yeah. All right. So, Christina Halk at Patch mm -hmm. um, has announced basically that the most haunted house in America um, it was dedicated as a historic museum in 1960 and has been open to the public ever since it normally attracts 80 to 90,000 visitors a year <laughs> that's a lot that's a lot of people and they have I haven't even that. heard of it and <laughs> I know so the the tours are only ten dollars. Mm -hmm. um, virtual tour, yeah. Yeah, so I I think we might actually do. Why might we do it? Yeah. Why not? Why not? I'm bored. And it's hosted, and it includes Q and A. So. Yeah, and they're hosting doing a vir a separate virtual event that includes mm -hmm. the Q and A. That's a right a, only uh, that's done regular intervals. But yeah, it's only but ten it's bucks. Also ten dollars. So why not go to that one and get your questions answered? Yeah, the main difference is you can do the virtual tour anytime, where that you have to do it at whatever times they're offering it. Yeah. So they probably would just do the tour part. Yeah. All right, but that takes us to another haunted, quote-unquote, haunted house in these cases. Um, virtually opening for Halloween. I loved this idea. This was a lot of fun to me. Yeah. 
This is an article by Samantha Davis Freeman at Attractions Magazine. The American Horror Story Murder House is virtually opening for Halloween. It's the Los Angeles Murder House. Well, it's a 24-hour live stream featuring 15 cameras uh, strewn through the 10,000-square-foot home. It will also feature a paranormal investigation by exorcist Bishop James Long. There will be a seance. And they got like a whole laundry list of uh, experts. I'm uh, struggling to use that term here. Right. But of people that will also be offering commentary. If They're this is considered your considered experts in their field. Yeah, there you go. We'll work, we'll work with that. If, if this is your jammy jam, this is your jammy jam. Yeah. And uh, that's fine. It will be a ticketed event. It's $25. Mm-hmm. But for a 24 hour live stream with like, like, they legit listed like eight people. Yeah. Um. So it's going to be an action packed. I mean, as action packed as watching an, a house, <laughs> on the, an empty house on live stream can be. Yeah. <laughs> but hey, if that, like I said, if you're into that paranormal investigation stuff, this might be something you want to check out. Uh, so once again, all right. Good luck. And, and that's the end of the news news, but we do have a shout out real fast. Yes. We wanted to give a shout out to Bill Ritchie, who is often in the comments um, yes. live with us. His outdoor display was featured on Channel 17 Wand. Um, Which, by the way, Bill, 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 your local NBC affiliate is Wand. <laughs> and y'all ain't doing anything about that? They're bringing the magic. I, you know, Cosmo and Wanda want to have a word. I like mine better. Mm. Um, <laughs> But anyway, it looks like you got some good coverage. Yeah, and, and really good shots of the yard display you're doing. Yeah, yeah. I, I want to know how you do that lightning effect. Did yeah, that you, was cool. Did yeah. you put up like a screen or something, or is that just part of your house and I just can't tell from the video? Yeah, yeah, but yeah, and this is after they pivoted to an outdoor display. Yeah, because they do normally have an indoor haunt. Yeah, indoor haunt like, like, like us. Yeah. yeah, so can't do it this year. So they pivoted to a fully outdoor display. It looks great. Good news coverage. Good job. All right, so that brings us to the question of the week again, and I think we have at least a few answers to talk about. Oh, we do, we do. Okay. So, Elliot said that he's going to be painting, eating candy, and maybe watch a horror movie or seven. So, every other night, please. No. Uh, Chris Gay is doing drive through trick-or-treat in our haunt parking lot and a live stream ghost hunt later in the, in the haunt. That sounds like a blast. Yeah, it does. Japes is doing limited trip retreating and then bringing Spooky on the porch with Willow. Um, and congratulations to Japes. His new baby was born. Yes. This. Yes. Shout out to Japes, too. Yes. Um, Greg Reinhardt said, not Halloweenish, but actually heading to the in laws for a combined birthday party for him and the father in law. You know, it's a celebration. I don't care. Yeah. And your birthday is on Halloween. All right. Um, you're not listening a music podcast, said still actively trying to find a place to bring the girls to trick-or-treating. May have to do a private family Halloween party. Yeah. Yeah. You're um, not alone in that. <laughs> Ellie's apparently hosting a craft chat. <laughs> Did not know. <laughs> I, I'm completely, I was completely unaware. I know she's helping us with the trick-or-treating candy eating some. Yeah, but not not so much this year. No, she usually has like two days of food preparation and stuff for oh, our yeah, crew, she... so she's got it easy this year. So craft chat might might be a good idea. Yeah. Um, and then Dawn said, "Sadly, I don't usually get trick or treaters anyway, so I'll probably just watch some Halloween TV." And there is plenty, and that's one thing I have noticed um, this year more than last year is every streaming service has a Halloween thing going mm-hmm. on. Previously, like, some of them did, but it wasn't, like, c- completely consistent. This year's like, you've got Huluween. You've got, you know what I mean? You've got all these uh, great little streaming things. So there's always cool things to find. Um, if you want, uh, if you're curious, uh, one of the things we watched recently, we talked about the Headless Horsemen yeah. in the previous episode. Um, if you're wanting to watch the original um, Legend of Sleepy Hollow, it is in Disney+. Plus. Yes. You will either have to fast forward or um, sit through Mr. Toad's bullshittery. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, I don't know why we sat through it, but we did. I hate that fucking toad so hard. <laughs> I have never hated a toad. that I never thought about a toad in my life. But that did toad... Did you not grow up with those books? No. Oh. I didn't. Okay. That toad is an asshole. <laughs> 
That's kind of the point. He's a goddamn fucking asshole. He deserves yeah. what he he deserves to lose the fucking manor. <laughs> Serves him right. Spoilers. Oh, sorry. <laughs> well, I mean, that's like the third mark. It's like the third know, point in the I show. Know, I know. <laughs> Anyways, that's all we have this week. It's been a busy week, and we're gonna be just a little bit over the hour mark on time wise. It looks like it's so no. not too bad. No. But definitely, if you have not done so already, take a moment, check us out at hauntweekly.com, hauntweekly on Twitter, hauntweekly on Facebook. You can also find us at youtube.com slash hauntweekly. And, of course, you can find us on Google Play, iTunes, and Stitcher. And catch us live Sundays, 9 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Central. I said it right that time. I didn't say Friday. It's Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Catch us here as we do this live. It's at facebook.com slash hauntweekly. If you like the page, you will get alerts when we go live. Until next time, I'm Jonathan. I'm Crystal. And we will see you guys next week.